Right, we're going to finish off the long step pass today. So we'll drum to the bottom. Two main concepts we want to be thinking about is knee line and shoulder line. We've already kind of covered this, but we'll sort of recap on it again. But we'll just go from butterfly. So, main thing is that when I make the grip on Tyrone and I have grabbed the pants, it's all about when I back step that I physically get my knee in front of Tyrone's knee. Makes sense. If you don't beat the knee line, you're not going to get a good long step. So if you think about it, say we're here, all right, and I'm and I'm playing the game, I have to physically get this knee, my knee in front. For instance, if Tyrone had this leg out, all right, I can't go around it. I would have to come over it to get the long step. Now whether I come over it to get my knee in front of his or I come around it from the outside, but I have to have my knee in front of the side that I'm passing to, that, that's a must. The other thing is, when I do long step, I need to be staying away from the hip line. I have to be in line with the shoulders, because if I back step and I'm in line with the hips, it's more than likely it's gonna put you back in guard. So um, we'll just go from butterfly, see the butterfly. So, finishing off, the two main grips that I have obviously is lapel and this cross face. That's all I can do with my right hand or, or my lead hand. We've already addressed this, okay, whereby when I do this and then I fall onto my elbow, I know Tyrone wants to put me back in the guard, so the hand comes off the outside leg and comes to the inside leg. And now from that position, if Tyrone tries to bring his knee to his chest, I can just stiff arm him. Did I, did I go into the, the, the crocodile law? No. Mm. Well, the jaws of the crocodile, oh, our Donner does the whole, oh, the jaws of the crocodile, the most powerful jaws, you know, and, and, and all the beasts in the jungle. Whereas, you know, because it's got a, a massive force whenever it closes jaws, but if you tie a, a pair of tights around it, and keep his mouth closed, he mm -hmm. can't open that way. And it's the same with the legs. I mean, Tyrone's very strong. He can leg press me this way. But if I actually said, bring your knee to your chest, he's crap at it this way. So um, we were closing that down with that outside grip, just set up again. But being a wee bit more efficient with the grips, that's two grip switches. So what I actually could do from here is I could come underneath and get the grip on the pants. Once I beat his knee line and I step over, I'm in this position here. Now I don't even need to um, switch my grips. So then I have head positioning. I can move his knees that way. I'll just give him another angle on that so you can see. So it's just about being a wee bit more efficient. So rather than making the grip here, and then when I long step, having to switch to the inside grip so he doesn't put me back in the guard, I can reach through and make a grip here. Again, I'm making sure I don't actually grab um, at the end of the pants with four fingers inside, that's an illegal grip. Not that I care, but you'll probably break your fingers if he goes to, the, the reason we can't actually, it's illegal to actually grab at the cuffs here, because let's just say Tyrone brought his knees to his chest and done a massive kick, boom, I could get my fingers broke. So the grip has to be not at the end of the cuff, but somewhere, you know, like this. So, if I come over and make that grip, and I make this grip, I can do the same pass, only now I don't need to switch my grips. Okay. So once I slide my knee up a little bit, and as I back, long step back, now from this position, I know Tyrone wants to bring his knees, it's just I can stiff arm this. So I'm actually controlling two legs with one grip, and now I can bring my knee in and fill that space. Sometimes you get people that are really good at moving their hips, you know, the hip escape out and you're up against someone that is very good at putting you back in the guard, so we'll just do one more variation. So another thing we can do is use a different grip, which really controls the hips better. So say I'm playing the game, I can come inside, and I can physically come inside the leg and grab the hip like so, okay? So from our position, I'll slide that detail of beating that knee line, so when I actually drop back in here, but now I have no 
control of um, the inside knee, which is what he's going to do to um, put me in the guard, even though I have great control of the hips. So I would have to switch grips again, make a grip on the pants, and now from that position, I'll stiff arm this, fill the space of my knee, and walk his knees to the other side. I'm going to turn around, just push him around. <clears throat> this is a great pass. This is a pass you know, we would have learned a long, long time ago. Just a basic butterfly guard pass, where I'd come in and basically long step pass. Again, I was just taught then to fill that space in my knee. Donner's just going down the line a wee bit quicker. He will make the grip switch, so you can put me back in the guard. Head positioning, I'm on the shoulder line. And as I drive forward, I fill that space in my knee, and I'm in the side. 